Hello nurses, this is Kevin with nursingcamp.com and these are my scribble notes on nursing and the NCLEX. Today's focus is on uh, cardiac lecture number 40, cardiac medications affecting the force of contraction. Uh, I know tropic, I know the force from this sticky note found on nursing camp, social media, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and um, Etsy. Okay, so let's get into it. I know tropic. In the previous lecture, I talked about chronotropic and chronotropic is uh, chronos from the Greek god of time we also see with our time clocks and that affects the heart rate going up and down and what inotropic does is that inotropic is mainly focused on um, the force the force of contraction it's going to what it's going to do is is that it's going to increase that contraction it's generally used for patients that will need some extra cardiac output and extra pump for the heart. And this can be either be a chronic patient or an acute patient. So let's get right into the medications. All right, so there's two types that it's going to have. Either it's going to be a negative inotropic, which means it's going to decrease the contraction, so decrease the amount of force, or a positive, it's going to increase the contraction or the force of contraction. So let's get into the first one, calcium gluconate. Well, in the previous lecture, we talked about calcium blockers and calcium blockers block um, the, the uh, calcium channels. And whenever you're blocking calcium channels, you think of calcium as hard and it softens things up and it also slows down the heart rate. So like cardism has a negative um, chronotropic speed it's a blocker well this is calcium gluconate so you're giving something so you're giving calcium so it is basically increasing the amount of calcium which is hard around the uh, uh, calcium channels and therefore it increases the force of contraction and it has a positive inotropic the next one is digoxin now digoxin is interested in the sense that digoxin is generally given for a patient who you know has a poor ejection fraction and when patients have like AFib and um, they don't have good atrial kick, so nothing's happening in the atria, and or they had a serious MI and they had major tissue damage, well, the big problem with that is that um, there's no contraction. So the ejection fraction, see my ejection fraction lecture, is really down. And so what you need to do is it needs to be greater than 60 to 65 and with damage or AFib and no, no kick, the ejection fraction is low. So we need to put them on something um, or they're going to have symptoms of CHF, like shortness of breath or edema. So what we'll do is, is that um, digoxin is a calcium glycoside, so another G go. It's going to um, increase that force of contraction. So, which makes it a positive inotropic. There's some specific things that you monitor with uh, digoxin. So, uh, that's called K2 band AV. Please see my lecture on digoxin and calcium glycosides where I cover that. The next one is dopamine. Now, dopamine um, is a positive uh, chronotropic. And we talked about that because it's a beta. Now, it's beta from 0 to 10 micrograms per minute. And what happens is, is that increases the circulatory and stimulates the beta. Beta 1, one heart and two lungs, beta 2. Um, what it does is, is that it's going to agonize this beta receptor sites. And in turn, it's going to increase the heart rate. And it's also going to increase the, the force of contraction. So it makes an excellent med for shock. So it's going to increase the output, cardiac output. The next is uh, dobutamine. Now, dobutamine I call dobetamine, and it's mainly only beta. It's only beta one. It's it's a perfect uh, uh, chrono uh, inotropic medication um, for uh, patients with cardiogenic shock because it really just works on just the beta cells in the heart. And what happens is, is that it pumps the heart. So dobetamine gently will pump the heart, and so therefore it makes it a positive inotropic. 
Adobe means written twice. Nice. And then epinephrine. So epinephrine is a um, works on catecholamines and uh, the alpha two beta two receptor sites. And what it does is is that it's it's given in acute situations, and it is inotropic. It works directly on the heart, um, which is different than norepinephrine, which norepinephrine like called level fed. Level fed is an interesting medication because it works on the alpha receptor sites um, away from the heart. Please see my, my lecture on that where I talk about how alpha is away from the heart. But the good thing about uh, level fed is it also has some beta proper properties and it works on the fight or flight and and increases cardiac output. So it makes a perfect medication for sepsis. Please see my sepsis lecture where I cover that. And beta blocker. Well, beta blocker is not, we know it's a negative chronotropic because we've just been talking about beta as far as contractility. Well, if a block is going to block that, uh, the chronos, slow things down, it's also going to affect um, the contractility of the heart too. So um, it's going to block that contractility. So it's a negative chronotropic. Same thing with diltiazem, right? We talked about diltiazem and verapamil. If you're blocking those channels, you're going to decrease the conduction. And then you're going to decrease the tropic, the force of that contraction. And the last one is uh, quinidine, which quinidine uh, works on the refractory period of, of the cells on the heart, which also will uh, slow down that force of contraction. Um, and which gives it a negative, uh, negative um, inotropic. Uh, there's also another term called dromotropic. Now, not enough for a full lecture, but dromotropic is basically anything that changes the course of, of the heart. And what I mean by that is, is that it's like uh, converting rhythms. All right. So things that can convert rhythms are digoxin. Digoxin is dromotropic. Cardizem, diltiazem, is dromotropic. And amiodarone, amisloterone, amisloterone. So anything that can change that conversion convert that rate to change it to something else is called a dromotropic medication. Now, uh, not really tested as much. Um, mainly what you're tested on, especially the NCLEX, is knowing the difference between inotropic and chronotropic, because those are the most likely medications that you'll have to understand. I um, mean, it's usually anticipate, you know, if there's a problem, which medication you're anticipating, an inotropic versus a chronotropic. Okay, that about concludes it. My name is Kemp, and this is Nursing Kemp, and this was my inotropic medications. We'll see you next time. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, Google, Etsy, and nursingcamp.com, where you can get my sticky note, uh, acute medications. All right, see you.